Some see it as inevitable that large companies will play a big role in the cannabis industry. There was a time when marijuana was not an industry or people thought it wasn't an industry, but there was always commerce in it. And now that it's becoming legal, it's certainly going to become part of the economy. You know, there was a song that Donovan had maybe 40 years ago where he said, hippies out to make it rich must be the season of the witch. Beatniks out to make it rich must be the season of the witch. Must be the season. The plant belongs to everyone, but a particular variety might belong to an individual or to a company. So there's that. And, you know, if you don't have that kind of protection, then it doesn't give people an incentive to, pro to continue to produce newer and better things. This is becoming part of society, and that's the way Western society is. So you have to expect that. One of the threats is the concern for the lack of variety if the big companies are taking over and monopolizing the cultivation of cannabis seeds. The genetic variety of seeds is at the basis of the entire industry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please a warm welcome, Mr. Ed Rosenthal. Thank you. Very, very happy to have you here. Are you enjoying yourselves? I truly am. It's a pleasure to be here. And I presume for a lot of people you know from this place, you, you meet again. Who yes. did you meet for today? that you think, well, that was a special moment? Well, I um, have a special friendship with some of the uh, OGs, such as uh, ben, ben Drunkers, yeah. Bulldog people. Yeah. yeah. Because can you tell a little bit how you met them, how you first came to Holland? When was it? When was the first time you came to Holland? Uh, 1979. And, uh, Neville was, had the uh, seed bank, and uh, so I was a roving reporter, and so I came out to investigate that. Okay. And can you, because I think you are, a, oh, well, I named you like the sort of the guru, the grow guru of humankind in the, in the cannabis industry. Um, how do you see yourself in this whole industry and things happening now? and the mind's changing, how do you look upon yourself? Well, I'm primarily a researcher. And from my writing, results from my research. And other work that I do, sometimes I do consulting, and I, I've invented some things, and uh, that's all a result of that. So primarily, uh, I'm a generalist researcher. And there are people now as the industry gets segmented, who are specializing in one thing or another, and that makes them perhaps a little more, uh, uh, I, I would say uh, that they're able to do things a little more efficiently, but being a generalist gives you a broad, broad base so that you can bring, draw in other experiences to whatever you're working on. Mm -hmm. I like that. And as a researcher, what are the newest developments? Because I, I saw a, a sort of a clip, but you were with, with a powder, with THC, something like that, or? Yeah, yes, I, uh, I helped to invent uh, instant THC, which was, uh, was uh, it's, uh, it's patented. It's a, pa a THC that's uh, married to a maltose dextrose, so that it's, uh, when it's put in hot water, it, uh, forms a stable emulsion, making it easy to, to use either in cooking industrially or uh, just for your, your own um, uh, cup of coffee or tea or soup, stew. And the thing about it is they're individually packaged. So rather than, ha uh, rather than if, uh, so you can titrate individually as compared with, let's say you're at a dinner and the and the main course the lasagna or something has uh, t you know has uh, cannabinoids in it 
And so if you want a second piece, it means you have to get higher than you might want to be. But with, if you're self-titrating, if you're deciding individually how much you're putting in, it, in uh, then uh, you don't have to worry about getting too high or being overloaded. And this can, is already been legally sold in the United States? It, in it those was, states that it's possible? It was. There's a new company that's going to repackage it. Okay. Yes. So if you compare that with the situation, for example, we're here in Holland and, 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 and all these developments in the United States, I mean, well, when you were here the first time, I think it was a bit different. Well, Holland was a beacon of freedom at the time. And uh, in fact, I was involved in a, uh, 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 in a documentary that was made about that. And just as that documentary was coming out, the first uh, really repressive laws that dealt with how much uh, could how much uh, cannabis could be on, in a dispensary at one uh, in a uh, coffee shop at one time, and it was a hundred grams or a thousand grams. It was just ridiculous. So they'd have some one one uh, coffee shop had a truck outside with the stuff, and they'd constantly be bringing it in. It was <laughs> it was sold. It was just stupid, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, all, all of the, law, the new laws that Holland has, they're, they're all stupid. We all agree. I mean, it's worldwide. Don't think that I'm picking on, on Holland. You know, all the countries, including the United States, has these really stu You know, what else is it but ignorance and stupidity? There's, there's no other word for it or greed of one sort or another. Because what happens is the biggest... Uh, the biggest defenders of prohibition, as soon as it becomes legal, they seem to want to be directors of these corporations that are in some way involved in ma marijuana uh, uh, commerce. Uh, and uh, police chiefs become CEOs and things of companies. It's, it's, it's really terrible. And the other thing is, Well, we all know that no law should be worse than what it's trying to regulate. And every marijuana law in every country is worse than what it's trying to regulate. Can I hear a hand on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, anybody, anybody who doesn't agree with that, you're not going to enjoy the rest of this interview. <laughs> so you might as well. I don't. But the... the uh, what we, what we have to do is uh, do what Mark Emery said, overgrow the government. And as what happened in the United States is that pro prohibition proved itself impossible to enforce. They were never able to stop the supply. Mm. Now, if if they wanted to stop the supply of oxycodone or any of these opiates, they could easily do it because there are only a few manufacturers. And so you just re not only regulate, you control those manufacturers and see where those drugs are getting out. Right? So they could easily control it. Same thing with cocaine. Had they really wanted to control cocaine, the way to control cocaine is not by bombing the fields or anything like mm -hmm. that, but the, all the, think of all of those fields as the roots. And then that supply line, and there are only a few supply lines, those supply lines, that's the trunk of a tree. And then it gets dispersed out into the canopy, the retail dealers. Well, it's easy, you cut down the trunk, right? They never wanted to do that. I mean, they did it at the end, but they, they were, they, saw, they were sort of forced into it. Meanwhile, billions of dollars went in, hundreds of billions of dollars went into building up Miami, and the bankers were all complicit with it, and the government was complicit with it. But with marijuana, you can never control the supply. And that's because, unlike alcohol, unlike tobacco, unlike all these other drugs, Marijuana supply is a network. It's n there's no trunk. 
There's no, for instance, in California, there are 1,200 wineries, but hundreds of thousands of growers. Yeah. And even in Colorado, which has a legal distribution system, because the taxes are so high, there's a lot of room for a robust alternative supply that isn't government regulated. And so 50% of the marijuana that's, or marijuana, um, when I say marijuana, I mean marijuana, it's concentrates and all of that stuff. But 50% of that now is, uh, is not coming from regulated sources. And the same thing is beginning to happen in California because people don't want to pay high, really high prices. And then California is right next to the state of Oregon. And Oregon has much more sensible marijuana laws allowing more people to, to cultivate and also uh, uh, with much lower taxes. So people are going up to Oregon buying marijuana and bringing it down to California, also subverting the California system. And that's once again because marijuana is a network. So what Mark Emery said, overgrow the government is a reality. Like if every one of us in one way or another help grows, not necessarily, but help the supply line, not necessarily helping it, uh, it could be one way or another, you might not be a grower, you might be distributing or other things. But the idea of it is, as long as the government wants to stop it, it's, it's our duty to create a bigger and bigger supply to overgrow the government. <laughs> okay. And, and the variety, are you worried about the lack of variety? What, what there, is no, uh, there is no lack of variety. You look at all the seed companies here in Holland and all the seed companies all over the world now, there is no lack of variety. And that's, you know, what, there's a reason, there's a physical reason for that. And that is that, you know, marijuana has separate male and female plants. Now, most plants don't have that. You, either, either the male and the female uh, portions are on the same flower or on different flowers on, on the same plant. But with marijuana, it's really easy to separate the sexes because they're on different plants. So it's very easy to cross one with another. Now, if you try to do that with tomatoes, you better get your tweezers out, have uh, magnifying glasses so that you can see what you're doing, and painstakingly pull one organ from this tiny flower. You don't have to do that with, with weed. It just, it's very easy to breed. So everybody wants to be a breeder. So there are thousands, tens of thousands of varieties out there in, in the market now. I mean, you go to any Sensi Seed, probably has a hundred varieties right there. And then, you know, I will say that if you take almost any variety that anybody's growing, somewhere in it, it has Sensi Seed genetics. And you can buy some of those original genetics, you know, some of the original plants. You can even, there, and there's so many sources. I mean, Sensi is just one source of literally thousands of seed companies. And let's say each, each of those, let's say there are a thousand seed companies, which is a minimal amount. And each one of those has a hundred varieties. So. Yeah, so that's a hundred thousand. Yeah. And okay, so. And, and, and another thing that is happening in London. And uh, but you know, none of them is quite what I want. So I think I'm gonna take this plant and this plant and yeah. we'll breed it and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So, Another uh, thing that's happening along the world, or like in, in Lesotho in Africa, that uh, suddenly they, they're allowed to grow medicinal yes. cannabis. But American companies, Canadian companies, are taking, you know, are, are doing that. So large facilities of growing facilities of these, like Canopy, or uh, uh, you name them. And you're also an advisor, an advisor of uh, one of these companies, in that sense? Um, no, I'm in it. Famicello? No, no they, they have my name listed yeah. and all that. And uh, 
uh, if anybody knows them, ask them to either take my name down or send me some money or something. But they've never really been in contact with really? me about that. And so, you, so they're I'm, misusing not, I, I'm not going to go down to Colombia and fight them about it, you know, unless somebody gives me some armed guards, an army, <laughs> and whatever. Mm. But, it's not the, worth but it. these kind of companies, that's what you mean, those the, the people who are in, in, in advance, like against and, and withholding. Well, well, look, what makes you think, if, if marijuana is a legal market, what makes you think that marijuana won't act like any other legal market? Why? There is no reason to think that. So, of course, if you're going to have legal, not decriminalized, but legalized marijuana, well, you're going to have some companies become dominant in that market. Yeah. But the difference between marijuana and other, uh, other drugs that you might use or uh, you know, other substances is, you hear anybody growing coca? Mm. Anybody here know anybody who grows coca? Oh, one person. What's your name and address, please? No, no. So, let, so, or, or uh, you know, a few people might grow opium. It's not too hard to grow opium. But, or tobacco. You know, even if, it, you know, you can buy tobacco seed, you could grow it, but nobody grows it. But marijuana is easy to grow. So, so if you don't like what's going on with that, then do it yourself. And here's the other thing. In the United States, now I know that this isn't a good country for, for this, but in the United States, Half of the tomatoes that are used in the United States are grown by home growers. And they're not, they don't enter the market, they're not part of commerce. So. Um, is there anyone who would like to ask a question to Mr. Rosenthal before we finish? Questions, anyone? No? Yeah? Uh, you, I don't know you and you do not know me. My name is Philip and uh, Obviously, you're very high rated in the corporate industry of marijuana. Is that correct? In the corporate industry? Oh. No. No, I'm <laughs> afraid not. I'm more of a writer and researcher. I'm not much corporate. Okay. But in your opinion, uh, like from everything you said, why doesn't the White House, as I call it, um, just liberalize and take taxes? Legal, uh, make it well, legal. Well, are, are you talking about a, under an ordinary administration or <laughs> under an author, authoritarian, narcissistic administration? I, I don't want to go to a political discussion. I no, because, to because anything, no. anything dealing with the United States under Trump, you're dealing with an extra, uh, extraordinary oh, situation. I want to get into this for just a second on that. Uh, you know, I've been around longer than mo most of you here. And I went through the Nixon administration, and Nixon tried to take control of the government. But the Trump administration is more like uh, the the Polish the Polish government. It's trying to actually control the media and to take control. And you see who Trump admires. It's all these dictatorial strongmen: Putin, De Duarte. Uh, uh, the the uh, other uh, you know the North Korean um, you know all of these dictators those, those are the people he admires and he he has spoken that maybe it, it wouldn't be such a bad thing to extend you know be president for life or something like that this is an extraordinary stressful time in the United States yeah. so if you ask uh, what's going on federally, that is within the federal government in the United States, it's bizarre. It's really bizarre and frightening. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you, you've heard those warnings. People on, you know, people of a certain ilk like myself go, along, go walk around with this tension that they have all the time when they're in the States. And I, my wife and I went up to visit in Canada for a week and we realized how much less tension we had of all of this stuff, not thinking about it all the time. Now, as far as these other administrations go, I'm not going to give you a reason for it, but I'm going to tell you how 
the Democratic Party failed itself. So in 1980, uh, I think it was 80, Carter said no law should be more uh, harmful than what it's trying to regulate. And, and then he brought in the forerunner of the drug war. Okay, then, uh, and then uh, in the year 2000, Gore, uh, not 2000, uh, 2000, I don't know, when, it, when Gore was running, 2000, yeah. He said, they asked him, what about medical marijuana? And this guy had gone to Grateful Dead concerts he and his wife smoked, had smoked, you know, everything. He, he could have said, well, I think we should investigate the medical effects. And that would have given him the winning, the winning votes. And uh, instead he said it had no medical value. He, he lied. He knew he was lying and he paid for it. And then you go, back, you go up to uh, the, uh, the hell, uh, Hillary, when she, uh, Clinton, and I mean, she was no great shakes either, but certainly not, not a Trump-like character who's trying to take control of the government. So she well, could, government she basically. never addressed it. Mm -hmm. And if she had just addressed it, you think of the few votes difference in all the, you know, the U.S. has a Byzantine electoral system, but it, please. No, no, no. Well, if you think of the few votes that separated them and the winning and the losing, if she had just said medical, by that time where the majority of people in the United States were pro-medical, if she had just said that, she would have won again. That's how the Democratic Party continues okay. to fail nationally, continues to fail itself and marijuana users. Okay. So if you want to ask why, the reason why is because because you have a, it's just like Holland, not very different. You have this conservative government or these people who are afraid of the conservatives say, we'll come down on you. And they don't look at what the majority wants, yeah. which is free legal marijuana that isn't st strictly so, so strictly regulated. I think that's a great ending of Mr. Ed Rosenthal. Thank you very much. Your source of Cannabis News. Cannabis News Network.